हेलो एवरीबडी वेलकम और वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल दिस इज बाय फॉर द मोस्ट रिक्वेस्टेड वीडियो टिल नाउ एंड एज यू हैव रेड द टाइटल यू नाउ नो वॉट इट इज़ अबाउट येस टूडे आई विल बी रीडिंग ऑल द एसेज आई रोड फॉर द लेस्टर बी पियर्सन स्कॉलरशिप एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ टोरोंटो बट नॉट जस्ट दैट आई विल डू अ डिटेल्ड ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ माई आंसर्स एंड एक्सप्लेन वॉट आई वॉज थिंकिंग वाइल राइटिंग दैम टू हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ द स्कॉलरशिप कमिटी इन अ बेटर वे Plus, after every essay, I'll share the mistakes I made in my essays, which you should definitely avoid, and will give you some tips to help you improve your Lester B. Pearson scholarship essays. So, hopefully, you become the next Pearson scholar. Now, you guys have been flooding my Instagram DMs and YouTube comments with requests to share my essays. Initially, I wasn't comfortable sharing them as they include my personal struggles and stories. but it took me a little longer to put myself in your shoes or even the shoes of my younger self who struggled during the process of writing these essays as there weren't any example essays to get an idea of how to or how not to approach the lester b pearson scholarship essay prompts and you know what right now that is 15th february 2022 there is not a single essay sample of lester b pearson scholarship available online not on google not on youtube not on any social media platform if you want to write a common app essay you have both accepted common app essays and rejected common app essays available online to figure things out but if you want to write a lester b pearson scholarship essay you won't find any essay sample however there should be essay samples of at least one student who applied for the lester b pearson scholarship available online so students who have little to no resources and guidance from their school can become aware of one way of approaching the essay questions in the lester b pearson scholarship student application this is the reason i have gathered the courage to share my essays with you guys because i think that my essays would have not only helped my younger self but so many other students who lack guidance and inspiration now for those of you who don't know the lester b pearson scholarship is a fully funded scholarship for international students to pursue their undergraduate studies at the university of toronto if you'd like to learn in detail about this scholarship its eligibility criteria and the complete application process you can watch my study at uft for free video by clicking the link up here or down in the description below okay let me give you a little background about myself so i applied for the lester b pearson scholarship last year for the fall of 2021 and the deadline for submitting the student scholarship application was 18th january 2021 now if you have been on the channel for a while you'd know that i also applied to 12 other universities in the us which meant that i had dozens of essays to write and their due dates were spread across the first two weeks of january 2021 so from mid december 2020 till the second week of january 2021 i was busy writing their essays This left me with only a couple of days to complete the Lester B Pearson scholarship essays. So, what did I do? I rushed through the essays and even reused the essays I wrote in the common app to complete my scholarship application by the deadline. That is why you wouldn't be surprised if I told you that these essays first got me waitlisted for the Lester B Pearson scholarship, but eventually I was rejected for the scholarship. Now I'm not going to talk about my experience for the Lester B Pearson scholarship in this video as this video is solely about the essays but if you'd like to know about my personal experience of going through the Lester B Pearson scholarship application process the mistakes that you should avoid in the process and my advice to win this scholarship I have already created a detailed video on that which I highly recommend you watch if you are applying for the Lester B Pearson scholarship again you'll find its link in the top right corner and in the description below this video Looking back I realized that my essays weren't much thought out they were honestly rushed some did not even answer the question properly and there were some more problems in my essays that did not help me stand out and led to me being waitlisted and ultimately rejected therefore please do not consider my essays as model answers or a standard for writing your essays and a big disclaimer please do not copy any part of my essays because one you will instantly get caught by the scholarship committee and not only will your scholarship application get rejected you might even lose your admission to uft on charges of plagiarism two these essays did not get me accepted anyway so plagiarizing them will not be a good idea and you might end up on a worse route than mine now some of you might be wondering then why am i even sharing my essays in the first place when they did not get me accepted for the lester b pearson scholarship it is because of three reasons 
One, you will become aware of the mistakes you shouldn't make by looking at the mistakes I made during the writing process. Two, yes, there were things that I did wrong in my essays. However, not everything was problematic. So you'll also learn some good practices that you can follow to help you write your essays. And three, you would get an idea of how I approach these essays and they might give you some food for thought. You know, when I talked about sharing my essays on my Instagram story, some of you guys said that I shouldn't do that because the essays should be based on one's original thoughts and ideas. First of all, the essay prompts for the scholarship application are really subjective. They force you to think about your life experiences and goals, which vary from person to person. So even if you were to copy my essays, you can't because your interests, goals and life experiences are completely different from mine. Trust me, just being yourself the way you are in a candid manner is the best advice I can give you for your essays. Don't focus on what the scholarship committee wants to see you write. Write what you want to write. More on that later. Secondly, it's one thing to copy one's ideas outright, but it's another to take inspiration from one's write-up and come up with your own unique style and approach for the essays, which is what I hope you do after you see my essays. And lastly, I think that nothing in the creative space is entirely original. We take inspiration and ideas from our lives, role models, environment, and the work of our predecessors. And whatever we come up with is actually influenced by a lot of these factors and more. Austin Kleon in his book Steel Like an Artist says, All creative work is iterative. No idea is original. And all creators and their output are a sum of inspirations and heroes from whom they appropriate. My essays are just one sample approach to the scholarship essay questions. There are an infinite number of ways you can approach your scholarship essays. Therefore, have a look at my style and the thinking behind that style. See what I've done right and where I've gone wrong. Then accordingly, devise your own unique way of approaching the scholarship essays. With that being said, let's get started. So, after your school nominates you for the Lester B. Pearson Scholarship and you apply to UFT through OUAC, UFT will send you a student scholarship application link on your email. It is in this application that you will find all the essay questions. The essays I'll be reading are based on questions in the scholarship application for the fall of 2021. UFT did not change these questions in the scholarship application for the fall of 2022. And it is really likely that these questions will remain the same in 2023, 2024 and beyond. But we never know when UFT decides to change them or include additional questions alongside the previous ones. In fact, UFT did include three new questions in the 2022 scholarship application that were not present in the 2021 scholarship application, which I'll discuss later in the video. Now, if you're watching this video in 2023 or 2024, don't be surprised if the questions change. But no matter what questions you get, you will find lots of valuable lessons in my essays. So for every prompt, first, I'll read out the question for you guys. Then I'll share my response to that question and finally, I'll do a short analysis to figure out what we can learn from it. The first section of the 2021 scholarship application was the academic objectives section, which consisted of one short question of 100 words. It was, describe your academic objectives and indicate how these are appropriate to your long range goals. Please include specifically how a bachelor's degree from the University of Toronto will contribute to your achieving your longer range goals. 100 word maximum. All right, so what was my response? Here you go. Even though my school did not offer computer science, CS, I acquired a keen interest in it. Problem solving always intrigued me, especially in mathematics, and CS provided the answers to my questions regarding the working of the modern world. I aim to use artificial intelligence, a powerful, scalable problem solving tool, to develop innovative software projects, especially intelligent mobile apps, to tackle real world problems like hunger and illiteracy with diverse minds adding valuable perspectives. Through Scarborough's computer science entrepreneurship stream, I will combine my interests in CS, software engineering and social entrepreneurship to implement the framework slash methodologies that underlie the development of these solutions. All right, let's analyze this starting with the positive things first. Some students answer each part of the question separately by saying that my academic objectives are A, B and C while my long-term goals are X, Y and Z. However, I have not used that structure. 
Instead, I have used a clear structure in which all parts of the question are answered in a connected manner and presented as a cohesive whole. This is the structure I like and I would suggest everyone to use it as it is more open-ended and the answer looks more connected. Secondly, if you notice, I have stated artificial intelligence rather than computer science when I talked about developing innovative software projects. This is because computer science as a field of study is too broad and so to narrow my interest and create focus, I mentioned a branch of CS that I particularly found exciting and that I would use to develop solutions. The irony is that now learning more about AI, I find that stating artificial intelligence itself looks too broad because AI also has various branches such as neural networks, machine learning, etc. Another thing that I think I did pretty well is the inclusion of a few keywords that convey a lot of meaning. So if you look at the second paragraph, I've mentioned hunger and illiteracy because most of my extracurriculars were associated with tackling these problems and mentioning these shows the reader that I'm deeply passionate about addressing not just any global issue, but specifically these problems. Moreover, I have mentioned diverse minds adding valuable perspectives to convey the message that I know the uniqueness of Toronto, which is the fact that it is one of the most multicultural cities in the world and getting surrounded by students from different backgrounds will add valuable perspectives to the solutions I'll develop. So you see, in just a few words, I've conveyed so much about my aims and values. All right, let's move on to the mistakes I made. There are so many of them, I don't know where to start. The first mistake I made, and that's what a lot of students make, is that they do not read the question properly, leading them to make two more mistakes. One, not addressing all parts of the question, and two, including irrelevant details and information in the answer. In the first paragraph, I've briefly talked about computer science and why I'm interested in that field. But if you look at the question, nowhere is it asking you to describe why you are interested in a particular program or major. So even though my first paragraph helps the scholarship committee learn more about me and why I'm interested in a particular area of study, it does not meet their expectation as it includes irrelevant details that obviously don't address any part of the question. This is a red sign for the scholarship committee because they would think that I'm not much interested in the scholarship as I haven't even taken the time to read the question properly and prepare my response for it. Therefore, before you answer any question, read the question critically so you are able to avoid irrelevant details and address all parts of the question. A good strategy to address all the parts of the question is to break the question down into separate parts that need to be addressed. Brainstorm possible answers for each part, then according to it, plan your answer. If you actually do this for every question, you'll automatically get into the top 50% of the applicants because half of the students do not take the time to do these things. Now, this question is a three part question where you need to first describe your academic objectives, then talk about how they'll help you reach your long range goals. And lastly, how UFT's education specifically can aid the process and help you in your journey to reach your goals. If you critically evaluate my response, you'll notice that I have only addressed two parts of the question and that too in an incomplete fashion. One, I have talked about one of my life goals, which is to use AI to solve real world problems. And two, how UFT's education will help me achieve that. In terms of the demands of the question, I haven't described my academic objectives and how they relate to my long term goals. I think the scholarship committee would have a hard time understanding my exact motivation to get educated at UFT because just stating that I want to solve real world problems through AI isn't sufficient. Rather, I should have mentioned exactly how I want to achieve this long range goal. This costly mistake could have been easily avoided had I just stated my exact academic objective of starting a tech startup in the AI space. Therefore, do not forget to include your concrete academic objectives and tell the reader exactly how they will help you realize your goals. Another thing that might seem simplistic but would have truly taken my writing to the next level is specificity. Although I have been quite specific in terms of my long term goal in the second paragraph, I've realized that I haven't been that specific in describing exactly how UFT Scarborough's computer science program will help me develop solutions to real world problems. I think it could have been much better in terms of specificity and impact if I had mentioned a few classes from the program or research work of a professor that I find particularly interesting and that would help me develop those solutions. 
Furthermore, if you notice, the terms methodologies, framework and solutions in the last paragraph seem pretty vague and generic and it makes the reader question what exact methodology or framework from UTSC's program would you like to learn and implement and what exact solutions are you talking about? The lesson for you and me here is to not include big words just because they sound impressive. Instead, use words that convey the message correctly even if they are simple and not fancy. Overall, I could have massively improved this answer had I removed vague statements, avoided generalization and included specific academic objectives and goals. Let's now move on to the next question. Oh, but before that, I just want to let you know that I have published all of my essays on my blog so you don't need to write anything down. I have given the blog post link in the description and if you'd like to revisit my essays, look at how I approach them and see the mistakes that you should avoid, feel free to click the link in the description of this video. The second section of the scholarship application was the self letter of reference, which had one question with a word limit of 300 words and it was the students who are nominated for the Lester B. Pearson International Scholarship are students who have demonstrated exceptional academic achievement and creativity, who are accepted as leaders within their school, and who have the potential to contribute to the global community in the future. They can be distinguished from other students who may have equally high academic results by virtue of their breadth of interest, intellectual energy, and impact on the life of their school and community. Write a letter of reference for yourself in the third person describing how the applicant, you, meets these criteria. The letter should refer to the specific achievements and experiences. It may also comment on any weaknesses. 300 word maximum. Okay, here is the answer I wrote. Note, the following barely describes Zohair. Zohair's school is not a world-class school with massive resources. Despite most of his high school teachers teaching the IGCSE and IBDP curriculum for the first time, subject teachers changing several times and not having a physics teacher for months, he secured grades that were never achieved by any school student before. Getting a 7 was challenging, but inspiring others to get a 7 was hard. He explored online resources, corrected his teacher's approach to internal assessments, organized physics classes, interacted with IB students around the world via WhatsApp and guided peers. In his pursuit to help others, he initiated seemingly small but transformative school changes, such as displaying formulas in class walls, reading books on the school bus, and teaching students after school for free. During the pandemic, he guided the students through virtual meetings and started a free college counseling program after the school counselor resigned. Zohair was a Project Infarc leader, raised $17,500, fed 700 families, recognized by IBO. Student Council Captain, organized first ever SC Assembly, recognized as best SC in school's history. MN 2019 Secretary General, Computer Skills Introduction Leader, taught computer basics to low income students. Kerala Flood Relief Initiative Leader, raised $800 in, five, in 15 days, commended by Habitat NGO. Winter Clothes Collection Leader, donated 1000 plus clothes to the homeless, etc. Zohair is a teacher, teaching his younger brother daily counselor slash mentor, guiding students in college applications, tech YouTuber, 5 plus years, 450 plus videos, 5 million plus views, blogger, 80 plus posts, 700,000 plus views globally, video editor, MUN and Project Infarct video team leader, photo editor, social media graphic design, animator, etc. <sighs> and with his breadth of viewpoints and unique background, he has massive potential to contribute to UFT's inclusive yet diverse community while opening doors for low-income Indian students like him to pursue world-class education and become leaders in their communities. Now there are a couple of good things about this essay, but there are equally bad things about it. Let's start with the good ones again. Firstly, the scholarship committee knows my final IB diploma score, which was a 43 out of 45 and they have a lot of applicants with similar if not better scores. So what I have done in the first two paragraphs is to give the context behind the score by stating my educational background, lack of resources and the obstacles in my way. This shows the scholarship committee where I'm coming from and helps them understand my unique situation and challenges to get a score of 43 in IB. Basically, I am showing that it was really challenging to get this score in an environment where there aren't any world class resources or facilities. Secondly, you can see that in the third paragraph, 
I have not only highlighted the quality of helping others but also given instances and pieces of evidence as a third person of when that quality shined in my personality. The quality of helping others was one of the core values I focused on in my college applications, be it supplemental essays or college scholarship essays and you will see it in the coming essay too. Thirdly, I have mentioned the different roles and responsibilities I have taken up in high school and continue to take up in my gap year, which enriched me with different viewpoints and perspectives. And not just that, I have stated the personal and collective achievements in all of the different endeavors, thus showing that I have not only taken up a wide range of roles and participated in various projects, but have made significant impacts in them. So, I covered all of the roles and their achievements in the 4th and 5th paragraphs and in the last paragraph, I basically explained my purpose behind mentioning all of the different roles and achievements. It was to show the committee that I have great potential to make meaningful contributions to UFT because being successful in different endeavors has equipped me with various perspectives. In short, I am telling them that I can take up and excel in various roles in college very easily because of my past experiences. This essay may now seem impressive, but it won't in a minute. Do you know how did I come up with this answer? If you have completed your common app, it wouldn't be hard for you to believe that I chose some of the achievements from my common app activities section and added them here. Because at that time, I didn't have much time to think of a better way to answer this question. So reusing and recycling my previous essays was the only option. What I learned from it is that whenever you are in a rush, no matter how good your answer seems to you at that moment, you will have made certain mistakes without even realizing it. The first mistake I made here is quite obvious, but it wasn't that obvious to me when I wrote this. I think you would have spotted this mistake easily and it is talking about way too many ideas in an unclear fashion and not elaborating on them properly. Remember that the scholarship committee reading this wants to know the person, their struggles and the story behind the roles and achievements, not just the numbers. It is better to have a few roles and achievements with explanation and elaboration rather than having all of your impressive feats listed out. Had I taken a few ideas and gone deep in them, this response would have turned out much better because lists of achievements aren't as memorable and impactful as concentrating and giving context on a few key points. For instance, in the second paragraph, I have mentioned a couple of steps I had taken to improve education. It would have been much better if I had taken the first sentence, getting a 7 was challenging but inspiring others to get a 7 was hard and given more information on how I inspired others to achieve the best possible grades. Maybe by stating that I cleared their doubts, taught them different subjects and assisted them with their projects. In other words, simply saying that I inspired others to get a 7 isn't that impactful because it lacks context, background and explanation. Therefore, focus on a few ideas and let the reader know the story and struggle associated with those ideas. By the way, if you don't know what a 7 means, in IB, you get a score from 1 to 7 in each subject based on your performance in exams and internal assessment. That's why I said getting a 7 and inspiring others to get a 7. Now, the second mistake. And this one is quite funny. You see the first line of this essay? Note the following barely describes Zohir is entirely unnecessary because the scholarship committee already knows that these essays are just a snippet from the life of the students and they do not fully describe them. Therefore, avoid using phrases like this barely describes the student or this essay's limited word count isn't allowing me to fully express myself as they are completely unnecessary. Plus, they eat up your valuable word count which could be better used for other purposes. Now, the question I shared with you was the only question in the self letter of reference section of the scholarship application in 2021. However, in the 2022 scholarship application, University of Toronto introduced another question which is From your self letter of reference, please list your top 5 accomplishments, achievements, experiences and or activities in descending order. These can be of any nature, extracurricular, civic, artistic, sporting, academic or other. As you can see, this question is directly related to the letter of reference question I just shared with you. And if you are familiar with the common app, you will notice that it is really similar to the common app activities section where you are required to list down and share the achievements of a maximum of 10 activities you engaged in high school, starting with the ones you consider the most important. 
the common app activities section has a drop down for selecting the category of the activity and in the same manner uft has also mentioned the different categories of activities at the end of the question thus opening more possibilities and avenues from which you can list the activities now there is a lot more i want to tell you about these questions but it would make the video too long so i'm planning to do a detailed breakdown for all of the lester b pearson scholarship essay questions and will be going in great detail about how to answer them step by step in another video which i'll soon upload on the channel for those of you who have submitted your lester b pearson scholarship application i'm sorry i couldn't upload these videos sooner still it will be a helpful resource for those of you who will be applying next year so if you'd like to get notified once i upload that video make sure you subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon if you haven't done that yet all right let's move on to the next section the third section which is the lengthiest of all the sections in terms of word count it is the essay section which contains one question of 800 words and it goes like this describe a personal life experience that has had particular significance for you and highlight the reasons it was significant whether it had an impact on others and any insights or understandings you gained from it 800 word maximum the response to this question is quite personal and this is the answer that i was specially hesitating to share but i decided to do it anyway it requires a little background about myself before i can read it out to you so i grew up in a joint family of around 30 people with all of my cousins uncles and aunts living together However, when I entered high school, that joint family broke apart due to financial disputes and greed of some of the family members. My immediate family, especially my father, had to bear the brunt of this breakdown, both financially and emotionally. He had to work really hard to support my education and other family needs. My essay highlights the emotional and financial impacts on me and how these hurdles changed me and my perspective on life. Moreover, it highlights a tragic historical event that my father witnessed as an adult. It is the Bhopal gas tragedy, which is also the worst industrial disaster in the world. In short, an American company was making pesticides with highly toxic chemicals and without proper safety measures in Bhopal, which is my hometown. The lack of safety precautions led to a mass leakage of a poisonous gas named methyl isocyanate, which enveloped the city made it a gas chamber and killed thousands of people in a matter of hours. That's it for the background. Now let me read it out to you. Upon entering high school, my life completely changed. I lost my identity. I was forced to leave a household that had nourished me for 15 years. Seeing the smiling faces turn into disgusting looks and cheerful gatherings turn into aggressive disputes developed in me one predominant feeling. Grief. I was at the most critical junction of my education, yet my family failed me when I needed them the most. I questioned the people that had raised me. Why are these difficulties imposed on me by my own blood? Shouldn't they be the first one to take care of me? Questions like these always preoccupied my mind. When I was at school, math problems that once fascinated me yearned for my attention. When I was at home, financial constraints only reinforced my questions. Soon, these unanswered questions turned into judgments. People can do anything for money. People only care about themselves. People are only good for a reason. When my benchmate shared his tiffin, I knew that he would ask me to solve a math problem for him next. When my mom met me with a smile, I knew she would ask me to dry the laundry next. From businesses to governments to relationships, Everything seemed to involve some sort of gain or profit. Unconsciously, I saw everything and everyone from this lens. Eventually, as financial difficulties intensified, my sadness transformed into resentment, a resentment towards my parents. Why is my father not present in the school's award ceremony to appreciate his son's efforts? Why am I the only one whose parents haven't saved for my college education? Why do I have to self-study when my peers have joined the city's best coaching institutes? My father reached out. As a kid, my father would collect cow dung after school to support his family. There were times, few days would pass by working without a morsel of food or a minute of sleep. Life was a blessing until Bhopal gas tragedy, my father said with tears in his eyes. Note, the following barely describes what happened is happening. 
40 tons of methyl isocyanate was stored without adequate safety measures to save costs by educated people, knowing it could kill the whole city. On 2nd December 1984, the toxic gas leaked, killing 4,000 people immediately. Every minute, the gas diffused and moved faster and faster. Shock, confusion, cries. Amid the chaos, a worker ran towards the leaking tank. In attempting to stop the leakage, he died of poisoning. Be like that young man, my father said with trembling lips. My father wouldn't be alive had the man not closed the leaking vessels. He sacrificed his life to save others. Suddenly, everything was put into perspective. I saw my difficulties infinitesimally small compared to the struggles of my father. I realized that the life I complained about is much better than the life my father wished he had in his youth. Thousands of humans and animals are breathing just because a man decided to risk whatever he had to help others. I have tried my best to imbibe the legacy of this forgotten hero. From serving hundreds of needy families in school holidays, replying to thousands of questions in YouTube comments, pulling all-nighters for helping my friends in their physics projects to teaching juniors in the school bus. I have pushed myself to act beyond myself and help others. My father's eyes reflect every impoverished individual who had to lose education, most basic right, to feed his family. And anyone having to lose this right is one too much. This is why I want to educate myself. Not to get a comfortable job in Silicon Valley, but rather to build lives by giving education back to my townspeople. More importantly, I want to revive the legacy of this young man by thinking and acting beyond myself in any endeavor I step into. In fact, this value has remained a guiding light in all of my high school pursuits. All this time, I was looking at everyone from the same lens, just judging and guessing their intentions, without realizing that the intent is best known to the person, which can only be revealed when we reach out with an open heart. Thus, when I see dejected faces, I see myself in them. I respect. I approach, I talk, I help, because I know stories and perspectives are waiting to be heard, just seeking companionship. Upon entering high school, my life completely changed. I found myself, a forgotten self. Being turned underprivileged by my own blood actually privileged me with a higher appreciation of basic needs, guided me to respect individuals' unique circumstances, and above all, gave me a direction to think beyond myself. Alright, so that was my response. Seems quite heavy, isn't it? There is so much to talk about here. Let's break it down, starting with the good practices. If you look at the first paragraph, you'll notice that I started with a shocking and hooking statement. Upon entering high school, my life completely changed. I lost my identity. This makes the reader really invested in the essay, with several questions popping into his mind. Like, what changed in his life? What was the identity he lost? And how did he lose his identity? The next few sentences of the paragraph are just building more curiosity and revealing the meaning behind me losing my identity. I think using a captivating statement that gives the reader various questions to think about is a great way to start long essays. The next element is really interesting and it is something that I have seen in a lot of great essays, which is the full circle strategy. Now, in the full circle strategy, you begin with an anecdote or story at the beginning of your essay. Move away from it to explain things, but come back to it in the conclusion by referring to the same anecdote or story to make a full circle. For instance, take a look at the first paragraph, which says, Upon entering high school, my life completely changed. I lost my identity. I was forced to leave a household that had nourished me for 15 years. I was at the most critical junction of my education, yet my family failed me when I needed them the most. Now have a look at the last paragraph. It says, Upon entering high school, my life completely changed. I found myself, a forgotten self, being turned underprivileged by my own blood actually privileged me with a higher appreciation of basic needs, guided me to respect individuals' unique circumstances, and above all gave me a direction to think beyond myself. So do you see how everything is coming full circle? I began with losing my identity due to family disputes and concluded with finding my identity due to family problems and their lessons. Also, I used the same initial statement to not only refer back to the beginning but to also show the reader that my perspective has shifted even though the problems remain the same. Initially, I thought I lost myself but due to the events that happened after the family breakdown, I not only found myself, my history but learned valuable lessons 
like appreciation of basic needs, respecting individuals and thinking beyond myself. In short, use the full circle strategy if you can. And it's not that complex. Remember, when you end your essay, simply bring the reader back to the beginning of the essay where you describe your story or anecdote and help them understand it through a different lens. All right, next, let's talk about some key features I've used to organize and structure my essay. Firstly, this essay doesn't contain big chunks of text. Rather, I have used short paragraphs, sometimes even one sentence paragraphs as to not overwhelm the reader and make my writing more inviting and easier to read. Secondly, I have used varied sentence structures to convey my message. I have asked questions, added long sentences, short sentences, two word sentences and included dialogues to make my essay as effective and engaging as possible. Because having the same sentence structure leads to monotony and repetition, which makes your writing less lively in general. Personally, I have used varied sentence structure keeping in mind that I am speaking directly with the reader. Because to be honest, varied sentence structure won't automatically guarantee engagement from the reader. So don't force it in your essay. Rather, use it to connect better with the reader as varied sentence structure generally looks more natural and captivating. Since we are talking about structure and organization, let me tell you that you won't find any high level words in my essay, except for four. Predominant, yarned, infinitesimally, and impoverished. This is because I think clarity is more important than including high level fancy words and clarity often comes through simplicity in language and being natural with one's voice. So please do not think that if you have not used high level words, your essay isn't impressive. If it's clear and simple, it will make a lot of impact. And even when I've used high level words, I didn't search online for them or use a dictionary. Instead, they came naturally in my mind as I was writing this essay. So yeah, be natural and write as if you are talking and describing your story to a friend of yours. Apart from all of this, another really important thing to keep in mind is to convey your values and qualities through the essay. Before I explain you this, let me ask you something. What are the three qualities or values did you learn about me from my essay? Pause this video right now and let me know it in the comments. Remember, you just have a few words to tell me that. Okay, now that you have written it, let me tell you what values I wanted to convey through my essay. Overcoming obstacles, helping others and thinking beyond myself. I have conveyed these values by showing them in practice, not simply telling them. Many students directly state that I overcame financial difficulties or I am really concerned about justice in my community without showing these values in practice in the essay. Let me give you an example of how I showed the scholarship committee that I like math and I'm good at it without stating it directly. Have a look at the second paragraph which says, when my benchmate shared his tiffin, I knew he would ask me to solve a math problem for him next. In this statement, very subtly, I have hinted that I am good at math as my benchmate would ask me to solve math problems for him. Alongside my good math course, perhaps this shows, though in a minor way, that I am competent for my top choice program, which requires good math skills. This leads me to another good example of showing and not just telling. Have a look at the last fourth paragraph, which says, From serving hundreds of needy families in school holidays, replying to thousands of questions in YouTube comments, pulling all-nighters for helping my friends in their physics projects, to teaching juniors in the school bus, I've pushed myself to act beyond myself and help others. I have mentioned four instances where I had acted beyond myself and helped others. And I took these instances from some of my main extracurricular activities in high school. Basically, I have first shown them everything in practice and then told them the meaning behind stating it through the statement, I have pushed myself to act beyond myself and help others, which also implies by extension that I'll continue to help others in college. Now, you won't know this, but let me tell you that the reason there is so much more to talk about in this essay is that this is basically my common app essay. I have shortened it a little bit to fit the word count for this question. However, the essence and the structure of the essay is the same. Again, I had to use my common app essay here because of the lack of time. And that's why if you look at the expectations of the question and my essay, you'll find that I have not addressed the question as fully and deeply as it demands 
even though the scholarship committee purposely creates these application questions to be open ended so as to open more possibilities for the answer they do expect students to not deviate substantially from the different parts of the question for this question students are expected to talk about a particular experience but in my response although i have mentioned that experience in which my father tells me his story i have not focused much on that one experience instead i have used most of my word count to talk about my background struggles and my father's context in other words my essay doesn't revolve around that one experience that the scholarship committee expects but rather it is about the general struggles in my life and how i found meaning in them let me tell you that this is a big problem with this essay in regards to the question and this is what actually happens when you try to fit one essay created for one purpose into another question with different expectations it leads to significant deviations from the demands of the question and you won't even realize it like i couldn't back then another thing i didn't realize was to change the word silicon valley to toronto I wrote about getting a comfortable job in Silicon Valley because through the common app I was applying to American universities and most tech graduates aim to get jobs in Silicon Valley as it's the tech hub of the US. However, when I'm writing this essay for UFT which is in Canada, I should have rather changed it to Toronto because that's the tech hub of Canada. Therefore, never fall in the trap of reusing and recycling other essays. If you have time, analyze the question Feel free to derive ideas from your essays in other college applications but avoid copy pasting entire or huge chunks of your already written out essays for these questions. Another big problem with this essay is the need for background. Since the scholarship committee didn't know my background and the context behind several situations, it would have been difficult for them to understand and relate to the things I was sharing in the essay. This would have been all right if I had shared my background with the scholarship committee. Now in the additional information section of the common app I had mentioned my family situation in detail for that reason it wouldn't have been difficult for my common app colleges to understand this essay because they would have read and known that I got separated from my extended family but the scholarship committee for the Lester B Pearson scholarship wouldn't have known this as there was neither an additional information section in the scholarship application nor did I mention my family context in the essay itself giving the background is something i didn't realize back then however after viewing this essay as a third person i began to see the lack of context in the essay itself therefore the lesson for you here is to make sure that you provide enough context and background to the situation in the write up itself so that the scholarship committee can understand your situation fully and deeply don't assume that the scholarship committee knows about you your school or your family situation These essays are the only piece of writing they have available with them so try to explain most of the things in your essays apart from all of this i think one more issue though not a major one in my essay but a big one in many essays is irrelevancy if you are asked to talk about an experience whatever you say should relate to it do not go on in great detail and talk about other things experiences or challenges unrelated to the main focus of the essay for instance In the 12th paragraph I have said note the following barely describes what happened is happening which is not at all needed and it unnecessarily eats up the word count on a side note let me give you a positive example of being relevant in the essay in the 8th paragraph I have mentioned that the financial difficulties I experienced led to a resentment towards my parents then in the next paragraph I have asked three questions to explain this resentment better first my father was busy earning money so he couldn't attend school meetings second whatever money he had saved was not with him due to the family dispute and third i couldn't join coaching institutes due to the lack of money in the family so you see how all of the three questions point at situations of financial hardship and directly relate to the resentment i talked about in the previous paragraph in short write whatever is relevant to the experience and avoid irrelevancy by removing ideas that do not relate to the main theme of the essay no matter how much attached you get to them now let's move on to the final section of the scholarship application and it was the additional question section which had two questions a short essay of 100 words and another question requiring a numerical answer all right let's start with the first question which said If you are not awarded a Lester B Pearson International Scholarship what are your plans for the next 4 years 100 word maximum For this question I wrote 
Right now, I should be a high school dropout laboring alongside my father. Only because of my school, world's lowest costing IB school, its mission, producing professionals with strong ethics, its people, left five figures for the community and its resources, provided me 100% scholarship, was I able to nurture my impact-oriented mindset. I will continue serving my school by guiding students in the IB program and college applications, regardless of receiving the scholarship. Moreover, I plan to attend a local college, self-learn CS through online courses and develop apps using Flutter while scaling up my content creation, YouTube and blog. This question is quite straightforward and asks you about your plans for the next four years if you don't receive the Lester B. Pearson scholarship. I think what's good about my answer is that I have highlighted specific activities like guiding students, developing apps and creating content that I'll continue to do or that I plan to undertake in the next four years. But I feel that this is not enough when it comes to answering this question fully and deeply. You see, even though I have mentioned that I plan to attend a local college or self-learn CS or develop apps using Flutter. Neither have I given an adequate description of these activities to help the reader understand them better, nor have I stated the reasons behind doing them, which the scholarship committee would be most curious to know, to understand my vision and goals. On top of this, when you look at the first paragraph, you will find it completely unrelated to the question. It doesn't discuss my plans for the next four years or what I'll do if I didn't get the scholarship. Although the first paragraph helps the scholarship committee know more about the role of my school in helping me develop an impact-oriented mindset, it does very little to address the question. And so for the scholarship committee, this paragraph wouldn't be impactful enough because they are expecting the student to talk about their backup plans if they don't receive the scholarship. Do you know where did the first paragraph come from? I copied it from one of my supplemental essays thinking that it would look good because it is impactful and is well written. However, little did I realize that focusing on the question is the best way for a constructive response and that irrelevant details, no matter how good they seem, don't help your essay or your application. Actually, the scholarship committee is asking you this question to know your preparedness and attitude towards future plans. They want students who know where they are heading and who have good constructive plans for the future. They look for students who are not planning or thinking about their goals because of a college or scholarship program they want to get into, but rather they are habitually doing it to better themselves and their communities. This doesn't mean that you should know exactly what you'll be doing in the future because nobody does. However, you should have an idea of what you'll be pursuing if you don't receive the scholarship. Therefore, the key to answering this question is to one, set specific goals for yourself related to your interests and mission in life, no matter what grade you are currently in. Two, have proper specific plans for yourself to be able to achieve your goals. And three, be very specific when describing the goals and plans in your answer. In other words, don't forget to convey the what, how and why of your future plans. Now let's move on to the second question of the additional questions section which was slightly different as it required the students to answer in numerical terms as opposed to writing an essay in other questions. This question was How much will your parents, guardians or other family members contribute each year while you are at the university in Canadian dollars? Honestly, I don't exactly know what I wrote for this question but what I can tell you is to be honest and genuine with your answer. Tell them exactly how much your family is expected to contribute to your education for each year of the four-year program without the amount burdening them. There is no right or wrong answer. It totally depends on your family's financial situation. So yeah, give an honest answer for this and remember to accurately convert the amount from your home currency to Canadian dollars. Otherwise, it will be a huge mistake on your part. Now, when I applied for the Lester B. Pearson scholarship for the fall of 2021, the two questions I just shared with you were the only two questions present in the additional questions section. But for the fall of 2022, UFT's scholarship committee included two more questions in this section, though not very different from the existing ones. The first question was, if you are awarded a Lester B. Pearson International Scholarship, how will you contribute to the Pearson Scholarship Program and our community of Pearson Scholars? 100 word maximum. In this question, they want to know what you will contribute to the community if you become a Pearson Scholar. 
if you remember in the first question of this section they also want to know what you'll do if you don't become a pearson scholar so you see how uft's scholarship committee is assessing you and your vision so thoroughly by asking these two opposite questions apart from this another question that was introduced in the scholarship application for the fall of 2022 was how much do you expect to have saved personally to fund your university studies in canadian dollars this question was asked alongside the second question of this section so uft can get an idea of both what you have saved personally for your education and what your family has saved for your education again there is no rocket science here simply and honestly state the right amount now if you guys have any question comment or feedback on any of my essays please do let me know in the comments below because i might have missed many things while analyzing these essays and also because if you put your thoughts and opinions in the comments it will help everyone get exposed to multiple perspectives of looking at the same essay and that will in turn help everyone with their writing process if you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up so this video reaches out to more people who lack information and guidance and if you'd like to see more college and scholarship related videos like this one do subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos Lastly I would like to thank you so much for sticking around till the end of the video I hope it was worth watching this video do comment I watched till the end and it was worth it to help me know that I didn't waste your time again thank you so much for your time see you in the next video goodbye and take care <laughs>